everybody, this is Don LaGreca from the Michael K Show. When it comes to talking sports, Bob Walters and Brett Grasso are the authority. Can't wait. When it comes to talking sports, they're the authority. It's Bob Walters and Brett Grasso. It's Lock Up Sports, and it starts now. Bring them out, bring them out. Hey. Bring them out, bring them out. Yeah. Bring them out, bring them out. Hey. hey. Bring them out. Here we go. Bob Walters from the Brian Gunzel Studios. This is Locked Up Sports. Deshaun Watson is out for the season with shoulder surgery. The Browns uh, take a big blow to their Super Bowl hopes. The Jets and Giants and the rest of the NFL get ready for a week 11. We'll get you ready as well. The Mets introduce their manager and Henrik Lundqvist, the king, gets inducted into the NHL Hockey Hall of Fame Welcome to the show, everybody. Bob Walters here. Nice to be with you. And I want to get uh, take care of some housekeeping real quick. If you're tuning in to see our interview with WFAN's Sean Marash from the Evan and Tiki show, uh, it will not happen this week. He had to cancel last night. He got sent by WFAN to Darren Waller's uh, charity event. So seeing as how WFAM pays the bills and we do not pay our guests here at Locked Up Sports, he made a wise decision and he had to cancel and we have no issue with it and we will get the interview. We I'm in, I'm in contact with him now. Uh, we, we don't have a time or day nailed down as to when it's going to be, but it will be soon and we will, as soon as I know, I will let you know and, you know, it's just something that I'll look forward to for the holidays. <laughs> so, Brett, of course, was gonna we were going to do the show last night, so now, because of that, uh, Brett has work today, so you're stuck with me today solo for you know a good half hour, 45 minutes or so. And let's get right to it. A lot going on uh, this morning. News broke Deshaun Watson's shoulder. He has a broken bone in his throwing shoulder, his right shoulder. Requires surgery. He's out for the season. That means P.J. Walker will take over the reins in Cleveland. This is a big blow to their... Super Bowl chances. I don't think they could, they have they can win the Super Bowl now. I don't I didn't think they could win the Super Bowl to be honest with you before this injury either. But there were people out there that did, and now I would say it's 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 a long shot at at best. It's a long shot. So it's a shame because um, Watson just had his, his signature moment as a Cleveland Brown last on Sunday. Uh, they came back from down two touchdowns down, fourteen points down in the fourth quarter. Now to be fair, it was a Comeback that was led by the defense, and this is a team that is led by its defense. They have one of the better de- defenses in the sport, right up there with the Jets and you know the other the other great defenses that that are, that there are in the league. The Browns are right there, and if they were going to go anywhere and if they were going to do anything special this week this year, it was going to be because of the defense. So that it's not a devastating blow to the the Brown season. The season's not over. It's not one of those situations, which happens a lot. You know, if a quarterback goes down, just you know, look at the Jets. But it is big news. It does reshuffle the the, the pecking order kind of in the AFC a little bit. So th- there was that. That was everywhere today. The Buffalo Bills, who the Jets play this week, are a mess. The Bills are a mess. You got Diggs tweeting about his brother who's on the Bills and tweeting about how he's not happy, how he's not getting the ball. It's it's a mess. They fired their offensive coordinator. Of course, there was the, the, the gut-wrenching loss that they had Monday night against the the Broncos where the guy missed the, the Broncos kicker, missed the, 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 the field goal with the gun, the game winning field goal. But the bills had 12 men on the field, gave him another chance to try it. Of course he made it. He's not going to miss two in a row. It was a chip shot. And just like that, the bills lose. And because of that, they fire their offensive coordinator on Tuesday Josh Allen is he's a great talent. We know he's a great talent. Okay. We've seen him go toe to toe in the playoffs with, with Mahomes in that great play in one of the all time playoff games going back and forth, up and down the field. They changed the rule because of it. But he's very careless with the football. He turns the ball over a lot. He's got a great arm. There's nobody's questioning Josh Allen's talent here. Nobody. We've seen it. We know he could do it. He's just careless with the ball. And that comes back to bite you. He's got a little Brett Favre in him. If you remember, Brett Favre was not always loved as as much as he is. You know, well, now he's not because now he's going to be going to prison, it sounds like. But he was not always loved as much as he was after he got the Super Bowl. Before the Super Bowl, Brett Favre, it was, it was kind of like 
He takes too many risks. He thinks he can make every throw. He had a little, he, they compared him to Jeff George. So now Josh Allen's being compared to, to Brett Favre. Not that it's a bad comparison. And if he can get himself a Super Bowl, if he's lucky enough to get himself a Super Bowl one day, it will all go away. But until that happens, they're going to be on him about these turnovers. And he turns the ball over way too much. Way too much. And it costs the team. And now, like I said, they're, they're falling apart. Buffalo's falling apart. They get the Jets this weekend. Now, for them, that's good news. For the Jets, I guess you can look at it like, hey, listen, we could go up there. Now the Bills are vulnerable. We could get them all, kick them while they're down. But you got to score points to win a game. And the Jets don't score points. You can't beat anybody. I don't care how, how down and out they are or how much uh, controversy is going on. If you don't score any points... So the Jets are going up there. Robert Solid, and you could see the, the the mold is starting to crack a little bit with the Jets. Okay, it's starting to they're starting to get a little upset. Sala is kind of criticizing backhanded criticisms more of Zach Wilson. It's just, I mean, I can't believe how much you're going to put up with this. How much more can you do? What else do you need to see to tell you that that Zach Wilson can't play quarterback and get your team into the end zone? Now, they are, don't get me wrong. They have a penalty issue. They have a discipline issue on that team. Robert Sala, he comes out, and, he, and he's got, he plays the tough bravado, and he's, he's all tough with his, with his words and how good his defense is, and we're going to do this to this quarterback. You're losing games, and you're not scoring points, and you're fading fast. And he's still talking for some reason about Aaron Rodgers. They got a quote today. Well, if Aaron's cleared to play and Aaron wants to play, he will play. Stop it. Aaron Rodgers isn't coming back. There's no miracle healer that he has. It takes everybody else on this earth a year to, to 18 months almost sometimes to come back from that injury. He is not coming back in four, four months. It's not happening. And while they're wasting their time again with this, and Robert Sala's even talking about it when he's got bigger issues, his team's fading out of the playoff race. The season's about to be over. And he's talking about... Aaron Rodgers coming back. He's not coming back. So you got to just deal with it. Now. And, and you, you, you hitched your wagon to Zach Wilson. You had your chances to get another quarterback. You hitched your wagon to Zach Wilson, and now you're going to go down with the ship. And that could, and listen, it, it's not out of the question. Now, I think it's unlikely, but it's not out of the question that both Robert Sala and Brian Dable could, could be out of jobs by the time this season's over. Okay. If the Giants go two and fifteen, do you really bring them back? I mean, I know you look, and I and I would be okay with them bringing them back, no matter what their record is this season, because the Giants change coaches all over the place every two years, and you can't have a stable franchise like that. But that game last week, you gave up six hundred yards of offense. That's embarrassing. That's the kind of that's the kind of thing that gets that gets people fired. Against the arrival, the Cowboys, the Giants were outscored 80 to 17 or 87 to 17 this year by the Cowboys. They gave up 600 yards of offense. Now, it doesn't matter how, how deficient Tommy DeVito is, he's not out there playing defense. And you got to have some pride when you're in a, on an NFL team like the Giants are. You got to have some pride and go out there and do it. And play just for pride. And they didn't. Because you know, there is no, nobody is, is playing well. Nobody is trying as hard as they can. If you're in the NFL and you're giving up 600 yards to any team. And that's the kind of stuff that gets coaches fired and gets people out in the streets losing their jobs. And you better believe the Maras are pissed off about this. And they are going to be watching very, very closely who dogs it, who, do, who plays hard. Who do we want on this team going forward? So Brian Dable, you know, he he talks he talks like he's secure, and I think he is secure. But if this thing goes down even faster than we think it's going to, and, and it's not going anywhere except down. Let's be real. They're going. They're, they're trying to lose these games by playing with Tommy uh, Tommy DeVito. Like I said, I don't want to say anything bad about Tommy DeVito. It's not his fault. He is who he is. Good for him. He's playing. He's, he gets a chance to start in the NFL for the eight games or seven games, whatever it is. Dream come true. 
But they gave up 600 yards of offense to the Dallas Cowboys the other day. And I get it. The defense is not, not you know, it's banged up and everything. But they, they, I don't care. If you're, in, if you're in the NFL, if you're an NFL team, you should not be giving up 600 yards to anybody at any time. It was embarrassing. And we knew it was going to happen. We knew that that game was going to be a blowout like that. You could see it a mile away. Giants didn't stand a chance. It was worse than we thought it was going to be. That's how bad it was. 600-some yards offense. Cowboys going up and down the field. I don't care how secure he thinks he is because he's talking in these press conferences like he, he's, oh, you know, we're going to try and do, we're gonna see what we got with DeVito. And, no. Now, I'm not saying you have to win games. We have to try. And and wait till they start playing home games and the building's half empty. Then the Maras, you know, then you're hitting the pockets. You're hitting the pockets and you're hitting the wallets of the owners. And that is another thing that will get you fired. Ten times out of ten. As far as the rest of the games go for this weekend, it's not a great slate of Sunday games. You, you got the two best games of the week are bookending the week, the week's play. You got tomorrow, which is going to be uh, Cincinnati visiting Baltimore, which is going to be the bet, which is uh, Al Michaels got to be thrilled. This is the best Thursday night game he's, he's going to have all year. Baltimore hosting Cincinnati, Cincinnati five and four, seven and two are the, the Ravens and both coming off tough losses. Both, both teams coming off tough losses. They, the Ravens, of course, blew the 14-point lead in the fourth quarter to the Browns and Deshaun Watson and that defense in Cleveland. And Houston shocked Cincinnati, which we, we were all shocked to see Houston win that game. But, hey, with the way their quarterback's playing, you, they could beat anybody at any time. So, And then you got the Super Bowl rematch on Monday night. Monday night is Kansas City in Arrowhead hosting the Eagles that's your two best games. I think I think the Eagles are going to lose that game. I think Arrowhead's a tough spot to go into. It's a tough place to go into and play if you're if you're any team. But especially if you're the Eagles who are kind of a flawed team. Let's be real. The Eagles lost to the Jets. And if they lost to the Jets, they could lose to anybody. Right? Come on. Because the Jets don't beat anybody. They don't score any points. So those are your two games. As far as the rest of the week 11 goes... It's just not a great slate of games. I mean, you got the local games. The Jets and the Bills sound interesting, and it's got some implications. The Bills are a mess. The Jets need to kind of cl- try and scratch and claw their way back into the playoff hunt. I don't think they're going to do it. I think the Bills are going to come with a chip on their shoulder. They're going to play well. They're they're a much more talented team. Well, if they put up 20 points, they're going to beat the Jets because the Jets aren't going to be able to put up 20 points. The other local team, the Giants, it, it playing Washington, like I said, I, I don't think the Giants are going to beat Washington. I don't think the Giants are going to really beat anybody the rest of the way, to be honest with you. You got the Cowboys with another easy game. The Cowboys have an easy schedule here through this part of the, of the of the season. You got the Giants, which is a gimme. You got Carolina coming up this week. This is a gimme. The Steelers and the Browns, that's going to be an interesting game, and it's going to be an even more interesting game now that Deshaun Watson is out. The Steelers never lose. The Steelers are 6-3. and three. They're doing it. I don't know how they're doing it. I'm not a big fan of the quarterback. I told you that. But they're six and three. They Mike Tomlin, this is his best coaching job, as far as I'm concerned, that he has done. He's got a team that's not very good, was not expected to be very good. Six and three. And now that they're going into Cleveland where they would have been, you know, bigger underdogs than they are actually right now. And Cleveland's going to be playing with PJ Walker, a rookie quarterback. Listen, I would not be surprised if the Steelers win this game. Both teams are six and three. Both teams are with a are heading towards the playoffs. That is a big game in the AFC. The other games, again, like nothing great. The Lions and the Bears, the Chargers and the Packers, Cardinals, Texans, Titans, Jaguars, Raiders, Dolphins. There's just no good games on Sunday. So it the bookends of this week are the highlighted games. Tomorrow night is probably the best game of the week. You got, you know, Al Michaels is is licking his chops ready for this one. He's going to be enthusiastic. He's going to be yelling. It's going to be the old, do you believe in miracles? Al Michaels tomorrow night as he finally gets himself a good game. This is by far the best. This might be the the best Thursday night game they've had in years. You know, so 
That's going to be on Amazon. And then Monday night, you got the Super Bowl rematch, the Eagles and the Chiefs from Arrowhead, which should be another good game. Uh, like it's the two, it's the two one seeds. It's a Super Bowl rematch. It's in Arrowhead, which is always a loud, boisterous uh, stadium. It's a tough spot to go into. I do think the 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 Chiefs win the game, and I think this a win like this, a win against the Eagles, could kind of springboard them and get the Chiefs right back on track. Uh, Mahomes still he still hasn't he still hasn't found a receiver that he likes that he trusts that he could throw into you know into a crowd and and can make the play like he had with Dante Hall he he has that with Kelsey but Kelsey's not a wide receiver Kelsey's a a tight end so it, it's different it's a different dynamic he 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 doesn't have that in a wide receiver he's got some he's got some young receivers we'll see how that goes we'll see if he can develop that relationship over the you know, final seven or six or seven weeks of the season heading into the playoffs where they're probably going to be the one or two seed. And and like you said, since the rule changed, it's it, that's important because there was only one bye in the in each conference. And that the one seed, it's very important to get the one seed. So this is a big game on Monday night. And then, like we said, the Sunday, not, not very good. Not, not very good games. I will be interested in that Steelers-Browns game at one o'clock, that will probably be your marquee game. Yes, and uh, you know that'll be Nance and Romo on that one. I was actually uh, surprised they gave Iron Eagle the Pittsburgh game last week, the Pittsburgh Green Bay game, which you know the, the franchises, uh, I guess the legendary franchises, but not really a marquee game. And you had Iron Eagle on the call. It turned out to be an excellent game. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't you know going into it a marquee game. I didn't think that would be the number two team broadcast team but that's where they sent iron on <clears throat> last week on sunday so that's the, the story from the nfl like i said the giants got to be careful all right they, dable's up there he, he got to be careful because this thing's going south and the maris are not going to take kindly to the giants just laying down this season and going two and 15 i don't care who they get i don't care what draft pick they get it's going to be they're going to lose money the stadium is going to be empty and, he, and and god forbid if the jets somehow crawl their way back into a playoff race and MetLife is rocking when the Jets play and it's dead when the Giants play, that's something that could get you fired. And and an embarrassment like they had last week against against Dallas is just unacceptable, especially against the Dallas, your rival. 600 yards offense, 600 yards of offense. Come on, that's embarrassing. I don't care how bad your team is. I don't care how many injuries you have. If you're an NFL team, you should not never give up 600 yards of offense, and the Giants did. And I, I don't know. I would I would keep them. I think they will keep them, but keep an eye on that. There are going to be people who lose their jobs this year because of the, what happened with the Giants. As far as the Jets go, Robert Sala, listen, he he's he's it's starting to crack with 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 Zach Wilson. He's done everything he can to to defend them. Why I don't know because he's going to end up going down with it. The Jets got to win this weekend. And we listen, it's like a broken record. We've said that now every week for the last three or four weeks. Jets got to win. Jets got to win this week. This is a huge game. It's a huge game. I think this is their last stand. I think this is their last stand. If they don't win this, it's over. It's a relevancy for the re remainder of the season. And you're headed that way anyway. But I guess, you know, you got a wounded Bills team limping in there with the turmoil and the firing of the coach. And I think the bills respond to that. And I think they beat the jets easily because they're the jets and they stink. So that's the, that's the story with the NFL, the Mets yesterday, the Mets introduced their manager for everybody to see. Cause we, like I said, remember with no idea, no idea who he was. Mendoza is now the manager of the Mets. It's official. I, I I did watch his press conference. I actually watched it today. I think he did a good job. He seems like he's very enthusiastic about the job. He's a baseball lifer. He seems like a a nice guy. That 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 doesn't really tell you much of anything, to be honest with you. I spoke with Bob Usler, our good friend Bob Usler, friend of the show, um, yesterday, and he said that he's got people at the Yes Network who know Mendoza and said that he's good people, and that the players really like him. He's going to be a player's manager. He knows baseball. So we'll see. Listen, we're going to give him a chance, right? Let's we'll see what he could do. And and you could win the press conference, and you could be a terrible manager, and you could lose the press conference and have just a, a terrible start in a city and, and go on to win a bunch of championships. 
So the press conference, really in the long run, is meaningless. I've seen people say he did good, did bad. I watched it. I thought he did a good job. I thought he sounded like, you know, he's confident. He, he's ready to get going. He's excited about having the job. He's not, you know, he's not going to rely on the, the Yankees and, and everything like that. He's going to do it a different way, his way, and he's ready to get going. So I'm, I'm curious and I'm excited to see how he does. And like I said, Bob Usler, uh, I spoke with him yesterday. A bunch of friends he said at the Yes Network, which which we will address with Bob Usler personally. I don't know why he has friends at the Yes Network, all right? That's the enemy over there. Um, and he said they love him over there, that, they, that they're excited for him. They think he's going to do a good job. They think he's going to be a good manager. He's a baseball lifer. He's a good baseball guy. He knows what he's doing. He sat. He was uh, Boone's right-hand man. So everything is coming up good on this guy. So, so far, so good. Again, they've yet to play a game. They've yet to play an inning. So who knows? Um, Yamamoto is the, the seems to be the key focus for the Mets here in free agency. Um, I don't, they're not going to go after Otani. I, I, whatever you hear, I, I don't think, I can't see them going after Otani. But Yamamoto, I think they will go after, and I think they're going to get him. And it's going to be big for the pitching staff because they need to, they're going to be, Two Japanese pitches. Two of the best pitches on the staff are going to be Japanese pitches. You got Diaz coming back from a missed season. Listen, expectations are tampered with the Mets, but we don't want to see a, a disaster season. You don't want to sit through it. It's too long. You know, you don't get endless amounts of seasons with these teams. You know, we're, we're all getting older. It's been a long time for the Mets. So you want to see a competitive team at least. That's why the Giants thing sucks because it's just flush one down the toilet. It's another one that's gone that you can never get back. The Rangers, Rangers are in the middle of a five day break, which is weird. I, I don't remember them doing that. I think they did it because of the Hall of Fame, but the Rangers don't play again until Saturday where they play the Devils. Big game, but it, it comes at a perfect time. This, but for whatever reason, why they're doing it. It's perfect for the Rangers. They're all banged up. You got Shesterkin. Hopefully you can get him back. You can get some other key players back. They get some rest. And the reason, I guess I'm guessing the reason is the Hockey Hall of Fame inductions. And you get Henrik Lundqvist into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Now, I was looking at some of the things. I had someone arguing. <clears throat> now, if you know me, my favorite player of all time is Mike Richter. Okay. Richter was, the Rangers won that cup right at a prime sports age for me. We were 13, 14 years old. It was a magical season. It had been 54 years. The fans were dying for a Stanley Cup. Messier came here. He brought the cup with Keenan. Mike Richter on that team was my favorite player. He's my favorite athlete along with Daryl Strawberry of all time. So it's tough for me to even make the comparison of Richter and Lundqvist and Eddie Jockerman and the Rangers goalies and all-time Rangers goalies. Listen, Lundqvist is, is, is head and shoulders above any other Ranger goalie. Okay, even Richter. Richter's number two. Richter, I think, is better than Jockerman. And Richter got the cup. That is what, that's the only thing that puts him in the same stratosphere as Henrik Lundqvist. When you look at the, at the stats and at the numbers, you got Richter who had 301 wins. Okay, he had 258 losses. He had 24 shutouts. His goals against was 289. His save percentage, 904. Fantastic numbers. He's not a Hockey Hall of Famer. He is in the American Hockey Hall of Fame. Different things. Two different things. It's He's not He's not a Hall of Famer. He's a legend. He's a Rangers legend. He's my, my all-time favorite player. But when you look at his numbers compared to Lundqvist, it's not, it's not even close. So Richter, 301 and 258 with a 289 goals against average, 904 and... The Stanley Cup, which is again very, very big in that in in his, on his resume. Lundqvist, of course, does not have the Stanley Cup. He's got gold medals. He's got world championships with Sweden. So he's done all of that stuff. Now his he's sixth all time in wins. So three hundred one for Richter, four hundred and fifty nine for Lundqvist. He's ninth all time in games played with eight hundred eighty seven games played. He's seventeenth all time in shutouts. He's got sixty four. So he's got 40 more shutouts, a half a season worth of shutouts than Richter. It's not, it's not comparable. It's not fair to even compare it. Like I say, you put Richter up there only because of the cup. Lundqvist, of course, got to the finals, got swept by the Kings, never got another chance. 
But on the international stage, Richter, again, was was great. He won a gold medal. He won world championships. Lundqvist was better. Lundqvist was just a better goalie. He carried that team multiple times into the playoffs. He won a, he won a Vezina. Richter never won a Vezina. Okay? He won a, he, he's one of three goalies going in. He was the marquee name on this year's induction ceremony. Now, the other names are interesting. There was another local player that went in who's just kind of getting shadowed, like pushed away. You really haven't heard much about it. Pierre Turgeon from the Islanders. He went into the Hall of Fame. Also, uh, Tom Barrasso from the, the Penguins, the Penguins goalie, and Mike Vernon, the goalie for the Calgary Flames for all those years, went into the playoffs with Lundqvist. He's a top 10 goalie. He's not as good. Listen, there are goal here, here are the goalies that I watch that are better than Lundqvist. Brodor, better than Lundqvist. Patrick Waugh, better than Lundqvist. Dominic Hasek is on the same level. I think that's a good argument you could have. Hasek and Bro and uh, and Lundqvist. Hasek was kind of all over the place. He was small. Lundqvist was more sound um, fundamentally with his mechanics. They were both great goalies, but like someone like Brodeur, like Brodeur is, Brodeur is a top two, top three goalie of all time. I mean, he's right up there with Dryden and with Patrick Waugh and names like that. Now, I was surprised that Mike Vernon went in and Tom Barrasso. Tom Barrasso, of course, won the two cups, so he he gets in. But Mike, Mike Vernon, I was a little surprised. And Pierre Turgeon, I was a little surprised that he got inducted into the Hall of Fame. But congratulations to everybody, the class of 2023. Pierre Turgeon, Mike Vernon, Tom Barrasso, and Henrik the King Lundqvist. And congratulations to all of them. And, and an all-time great. And we got to watch him here in New York. It's a shame he didn't get the cup. It's a shame that they didn't make a better series out of that either. Because they had a great run that year. And to get to the play, to get to the finals and just get swept right out by it by, by a better Kings team. Let's be real. The Kings were a better team that year. They, they were the best team. But you would have liked to see the Rangers get a couple wins. I mean, he's got four, he's got six hundred something wins. You'd like to have him at least have a, a, a Stanley Cup Finals win right under his belt. He doesn't have one, so it is what it is. Listen, it's a it's the toughest trophy to win. It's the toughest spot to be in. The goalie, we've had some great ones here, and like I said, it's tough for me to even sit here and tell you that that he's he's better than Richter. But it's it's undeniable. It's undeniable. And Richter holds a special spot in every New York Rangers heart because he brought us the Stanley Cup and he will always have that. He will, no one could ever take that away from him. But as far as who's a better legendary in the history of, of the NHL, who's a better goalie, there's not many better than Henrik Lundqvist. And we got to watch him here for 15 years and we, you know, consider yourself lucky. I was there when the Jersey went up to the rafters. Um, we had great seats for that right on the ice. It, it was it was an unbelievable night, and it's not it, like you know Messier is is. There's not many Rangers who are in that level that are, are above Henrik Lundqvist, and then Messier is one of them. Listen, Messier is probably one. Um, Roger Bear is probably another one who was up there. Brian Leach might be up there above Lundqvist. You know some of the the guys from the the legends from the '94 team, along with Roger Bear. And Henrik Lundqvist and then Eddie Jockerman. But Eddie Jockerman's, but you know, it's it's Lundqvist, Richter, Jockerman. Those are the three goalies numbers up in the rafters at the garden, and it goes right in that order. So congratulations to Henrik Lundqvist. Hockey Hall of Famer, you can never take that away. And it's a shame he didn't get the Stanley Cup. But when you look at the numbers and you compare him, he's an all timer. He's an all timer and he belongs right where he is. First ballot Hall of Famer. So congratulations there. So that 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 Pretty much does it for us. Just a quick uh, quick recap. Of course, Deshaun Watson out the remainder of the season. Shoulder surgery this week. His right shoulder he broke a bone in the first quarter of the game last week, on Sunday with the comeback. Uh, the, the NFL this week, week 11, you got the, the two best games of the week are bookending all the games. Sunday, it's, it's, a, it's not a great Sunday. Not a great Sunday. Um, the Browns and the Steelers are probably your game of the day on Sunday, but your two games of the week are tomorrow night, Amazon Prime. You got Cincinnati visiting Baltimore, huge game and a, and a good game. And then Monday night, you got the Super Bowl rematch, the 
Eagles in Arrowhead to face the Chiefs, which should be another good game. I like the Chiefs in that one. We'll be with you this weekend. We're going to try to get, get to you Sunday, do a Sunday show. Um, so that's it. Again, we apologize for not having Sean Marash. If you, if you tuned in for that, we will, he will be on in the upcoming weeks. As soon as I know, you will know. So we'll, we'll get that all straightened out. And that pretty much does it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, rate, review, and subscribe. Every little bit helps. Always tell your friends. You know, spread the word. We like to have as much people as possible enjoy this show. So that does it for me. Brett will be back hopefully this weekend with me. For everybody out there, enjoy the games this weekend. Enjoy, you know, they'll, they'll enjoy the nice weather, I guess, right? It's It's been nice weather. So enjoy everything. We'll talk to you on Sunday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to rate, rate review, and subscribe. I'll talk to you Sunday, everybody. I'm Bob Walters. See ya. the draw from Dominic Moore. Now Murray through center. Oh, that's a strange bounce off the board. What a stop by Hedrick Lundqvist. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> you have, that, that's a wide open net. He is in a league of his own.